Good morning and happy Tuesday. My name is Michael Leiserman here with the Trial Guides Tip of the Day this April 11th, 2023. Today's tip comes from Show the Story, The Power of Visual Advocacy by Bill Bailey and Robert Bailey. And we have both Bailey brothers here today. Um, Robert, will you read today's tip, please? Thank you, Michael. Here's the tip. Attorneys, like film directors, have the ability to visually introduce a character in a story. By using similar visual techniques to those used in filmmaking, you can focus attention on the decisions and actions of a particular character so the jury understands. For plaintiff's attorneys, the main character character of the story is the defendant. So the focus of the story is on the defendant's choices and actions. Wow. So we know from film, from stories that there's a character, there's got to be conflict. You know, anyone that studies stories knows the elements. And you're saying that the main character of your story as the plaintiff's lawyer should be the defendant, right? Absolutely correct. Yeah. Um, so when you're uh, consulting with lawyers, uh, can you, uh, you know, in helping them shape this story, can you uh, give us any hints, kind of initial things to look for? I can. One of the things to remember is the time you go to trial, you have been with the case easily two years in discovery. You know that case in and out. Remember, juries get to learn about the case as a whole in opening in 60 minutes. It's an incredible compression of time in the communication of information to go from two years of discovery to 60 minutes typically in an opening. So where you, in the old days, lawyers used to, um, kind of work on an opening the night before. That is not possible anymore because the amount of information and the way we're delivering it is crucial. One of the things lawyers don't think about is where to start the story to their best advantage for their client and for the empowerment of the jury and how to sequence that story. Because with any fact in your fact pattern, if you put it too soon, you diminish it. If you move that same fact in the story and you put it too late, you diminish it. That fact, along with the other facts, has to be delivered at the moment the jury needs it to understand the story. If you don't give it to them, then, they, you miss an opportunity to have them continue to be with you because they can be left wondering, well, where did that happen? And, the, and you're already, as an attorney, down four more facts, but they're still hung up on the previous fact that they didn't get the answer for. So sequencing seems to be something that Attorneys don't really understand, and there is sequencing to all parts of an opening. Globally, the 60 minutes has an overall sequence, but within the different parts of an opening, because an opening has a structure to it, there is sequencing within each one of those parts, and the parts have to be related to the whole. And what's really important here, Michael, is if you don't have your narrative sequenced correctly in the best possible way, whether it's liability or damages or even the rules of the road, then when you build visuals on that, the visuals will not be in the correct sequencing either. And you miss the opportunity to best represent your client if you don't know the best way to sequence. And in reviewing Clients, attorneys, openings. Over and over, I see 
sequencing is one of the most misunderstood techniques, and it is one of the most powerful techniques to win a jury right in the opening. And I've heard that over and over who attorneys have interviewed jurors after a trial, and they said, your opening won me over. I got the case and I made a decision right then that I was for the plaintiff. Wow. So where you start your story, how you sequence it is, is huge and really takes a lot of work and effort and storyboarding if you do that or however you, you want to uh, do a chronology or a timeline. I know, Bill, you've talked about that before, uh, timelines. Anything to, to add to this conversation? Well, I'm, I'm in my brother's amen corner on this. The single biggest problem I see with my students who are all super smart in their briefs. And when I teach trial ad courses, they don't know how to structure the story. What comes first? Uh, Robert and I have taken screenwriting classes and I also have taken nonfiction writing classes to make my briefs stronger. And so there are techniques that one learns with that, but lawyers coming out of law school, all facts seem to be equal. And the more of them you can cram in there, the better. And so over and over again, my emerging comments on briefs out of sequence, I'm constantly telling them this needs to be further back or this needs to be further along. For example, uh, on the first page of a brief, you should have the scene. You should have something visual that anchors. And oh my God, students just want to continue to describe things in words. And I tell them your entire first page is wasted because this comes too soon. You have to anchor in the scene. And the other thing that's so important about what Robert said, whether the stories to the jury or the judge, we are asking as plaintiff's lawyers for moral judgment. We are asking for the judge to say, the defendant is a bad person, is a bad corporation, and we can't do it with words. So in putting my briefs together, I'm always looking not only for the right sequence, but to extract critical moments where the defendant's carelessness, heedlessness caused the whole thing. And cherry pick those as I write the story in the brief. That makes a lot of sense, whether in the law school classroom, whether a lawyer writing a brief, whether the lawyer uh, presenting for trial, we have to think about sequencing and the images we use as you both uh, so well explore and show the story. If you don't have this book, go out and get it. Um, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Let's now just pause, take a deep breath together and be grateful to be alive this Tuesday. May the work that we do today help to reduce suffering in the world. May our efforts today help repair the world. May we fiercely end compassionately because those things can exist together. May we advocate for our clients. May we champion their stories. I'm going to ring a bell three times now. This can take you into a meditation practice, a prayer practice, or just remind you, it's Tuesday. Wake up, go out do good things and have fun while you're doing it. Have a great day.